Hi everyone, where have you been? I mean, where have I been? I've been busy promoting my most current book. In the past few months, I've been on about 10 different podcasts or 10 podcast episodes. If you are interested in listening to those podcasts, please go to my website, lynngriesmer.com. You'll see in the link below. Today's video is going to be about childbirth. The goal of today's video is to share with you the idea that giving birth can be spectacular. Giving birth, according to this couple who's going to share their story, was an amazing experience. When you let nature take its course, it might happen in the middle of the night, in the quiet of the night, in the peacefulness of your home, in the comfort of your home, just the two of you. It's a fascinating story and it's going to be told by my daughter Christina and her husband Colin. Their second birth was also a free birth or unassisted home birth. And in this video, I hope that you will think of it as thought provoking. Those of you who are in the childbearing years, those of you who are interested in childbirth, those of you hoping to get pregnant or who are currently pregnant, please listen to their story with an open mind. And here's the biggest question I want to ask you. What would be your dream birth experience? And this couple comes close from start to finish, from labor to birth was pretty much two hours. And it's just, it's just amazing. It's amazing what the human body can do. It's amazing how our bodies are meant to give birth. And their story, I would say it's inspiring, but really it's thought provoking. In September, I will be collecting birth stories, free birth stories, and I'm going to be working on another book on birth. At first, I thought it would be my second edition to Unassisted Home Birth and Active Love, which is 25 years old this August. So it's time to update, time to share what I've gained over the last 25 years on my advocacy and knowledge of unassisted home birth or free birth. Let's call it free birth. That is what the most current uh, term is being used. Keep in touch with me if you've given birth unassisted since 2021. I will be sharing stories and sharing a lot of different, different things. So I'm excited to begin the project this fall into next year. Oh, I'm starting it. Hello, Christina, and this is baby number two. So I'd like to make another uh, video of your birth story. Yeah. But right now we can see you don't have a birth story yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently 39 weeks and three days, I think, pregnant with number two. Mm -hmm. So um, this pregnancy has been... In the beginning, it was a lot better than my first. I felt better. I didn't have as much nausea. Um, it was hard having a toddler chase, to chase, her, chase around, like my exhaustion. I was more tired. Um, couldn't just lay on the couch as much. But now, towards the end, I'm feeling it a lot more than I did with him. Like, I was, even just last night, I was thinking, because with him, I had him a, almost a week late. And I was fine going past my due date. I was like, oh yeah, I could be pregnant forever. Like, it's whatever, it's fine. But this time I'm like, okay, I'm ready now. This baby can come out. Like, I'm in pain. <laughs> so oh, it's, like, it's uncomfortable. It's, yeah, like my whole, like when I sleep at night, sleeping, I get up like three times to pee every night and rolling over. Like my whole pelvis is like popping and hurts and like getting out of bed is hard. And Oh, you're ready. It's Yeah, so I'm like feeling it a lot more this time around. I don't know if it's just because I'm like bigger or second time close pregnancies i don't know but yes felix was born december 5th and he's about 16 months old yeah, he just turned and this one months. is due april 15th and it's now april 11th today so yeah just a few more days till the due date yeah i'm hoping not to go too much past <laughs> but it could be two weeks after that so i'm trying not to like mm -hmm. get excited but i mean i'm excited but are you looking to do anything different this time around? I'm going to try to do a water birth this time. I didn't do that with him. So that, I'm hoping, will help a 
lot with like pain management during the birth process and um, help me find a more comfortable position and all of that. Um, but as far as the birth, like overall, it's, we're still planning the same unassisted home birth, just my husband and I here. Um, nothing, the, the only big difference is the water birth part. Everything else is going to be pretty much the same. Now, you've been having chiropractic care throughout your pregnancy, and mm -hmm. tell us how that's been going, how often you go. Yeah, so with Felix, I started going, when I was pregnant with Felix, I started going when I was about 20 or 21 weeks along. So it definitely helped, but this time around, I think I was going from the very beginning, so I think it's helped a lot. I think that's what was helping with the nausea, and I didn't have any headaches or anything in the beginning of the pregnancy, so I think that really helped. And it's definitely been helping with overall like hip pain and all that stuff, too. Um, so I go... Once a week now, um, I think I started, when I first started going, it was twice a week for a few weeks just to like get my body used to being adjusted or like get it to a good place. And now I just go once a week and I take Felix with me. He comes every other week to the nice. chiropractor. So he's been getting adjusted since he was two days old. That was the first place we went after, oh, great. after I had it, we went to the chiropractor. Great. So yeah, I think it's been really beneficial for both of us. To be, to be going. All right. Any other comments you want to say um, as far as pregnancy preparation or how do you feel mentally? Do you feel stronger this time going, knowing what you might endure with the length of, you had a nine hour labor, give or take. And so now you know what to expect. Do you feel comfort with mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I definitely feel a lot better mentally going into it because I know more of what to expect. I mean, obviously every birth is different, so it could be totally different. It could be 20 hours long two hours long. I don't know how long the labor is going to be. Hopefully it's not super long, but um, I'm just really excited for Felix to have a little sibling and see them interact and he's going to be such a good big brother and it's going to change our family a lot, but I'm excited. All right. Well, thank you very much and we'll check in uh, when we have a baby to look at. Okay. okay. <laughs>
because I wanted to have the water birth this time around. And um, so I was like, yeah, we should probably start filling it. And Colin was like, no, we can probably wait on that. And I was like, no, we wow. need to start filling it now. So like I knew, knew. I knew some, it was going more quickly than it was with also, I just wanted the comfort of the water because I knew it would make me feel better. So I didn't necessarily know that she was going to be born fast, but I knew that I needed the relief faster okay. than I did the first time around. Okay. So we started filling the tub, the birth pool. Um, and then I was just, you know, going through more contractions. I had, I started playing like calming music. I think I had like nature sounds going or I don't even remember what I did. I pulled up Spotify and just started playing something on my phone just so, like to have in the background okay. and I was texting my mom because I because Felix was sleeping in the other room I'm texting my mom I'm texting you <laughs> 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 I was uh, Felix was sleeping in the other room and I didn't know how long I was gonna be in labor so I was like should someone come get him like or like when how that was all gonna work out so we were just texting like and I was like yeah I don't know like he's still sleeping whatever and then like as I was texting her, it was getting more intense, more intense, and the, like I was like, "Is the tub filled yet?" Like <laughs> I'm ready to get in. Um, and then I think at one point I don't even remember. Like I'm trying to remember in the moment, like what was ha what it was happening because I was it was all like so fast. Um, I started feeling like my body was like trying to push her out, and I was like, I was still the tub wasn't even filled, and I wasn't ready, wow. and I was like, "What's happening?" And I was like, "I'm pretty sure like she's." she's coming now and Colin was like what like the tub's not even like full all the way up it was enough it was like enough for me to get in but it wasn't yeah all the way up and it wasn't as hot as you wanted I wanted I mean it was yeah it was fine it was warm but it wasn't like the temperature or the the, the depth, fullness yeah. it was deep enough though okay. like I was in I think it was yeah it was fine yeah um so I was like I was leaning over the exercise but I still had my shorts on and I was like I need to get my shorts off like I thought she was just gonna like come right out right there wow. right then in there forceful but then so after that contraction I like call in quickly like I got into the tub and then I was in there for like probably only two contractions and then I was like yeah her head's coming out like because <laughs> I was leaning over and Colin was sitting on the bed and I was like holding his hands and then I was like I could feel her like coming starting to come down and I was like her head's like about to come out so he like ran around the back of the tub <laughs> and then sure enough next contraction she just like came all the way out wow like super no fast. pushing no nothing she just boom no, I mean came my up. body pushed for me like I didn't okay. have to physically like push her out my body was just like during the contraction my body would just like force oh. her mm -hmm. um and it was funny because I was texting my mom texting you and then like not sure I was like yeah I don't even know if we'll get the tub full enough and literally like 10 minutes later Colin took my phone took a picture and like sent it to, and like she's born so she we didn't know that um if she was a boy or a girl same way we did with Felix and so like I was facing like I had her and Colin was behind me and caught her and then he was like you were right it's a girl like because I had thought throughout this pregnancy that she was a girl like I just had a weird feeling like mm -hmm. it's a girl and he was like, no, it's a boy. And I was like, no, it's a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was like, you were right, it's a girl. And then she started crying really loud. I was like, okay, good. She's healthy. Everything's good. Um, Did she come up to the water naturally and quickly? Were you nervous? Some people about a water birth might be nervous that, oh, the baby has to take a breath of air. Oh, I was nervous But it really at all. doesn't I mean, it all right so away. Fast. She came up right away. Anyway, I mean, they're in the water, like in the womb, they're in the water. Yeah. So as long as you d keep them submerged, that's why they need you. If you, have a, if you have a water birth, you want to stay, keep all the way submerged until the baby's fully out mm -hmm. and then bring them out of the water. Because if they, once they come out, they're going to take a breath and yes. you don't want to put them back because then that's... Correct. So she, she came right out, he lifted her up and she started breathing and was fine after that. So I wasn't, I didn't have any worry. I wasn't worried about that at all. Wow, that's nope. an incredible story. And like I said, it's every woman's dream. Who would not want this birth? <laughs> it was quick. It wasn't furious and extremely painful. It was just faster than what you expected. And it moved mm -hmm. along and baby and mom worked together. Yeah, it was very, it wasn't, yeah, it was just fast and intense for sure. But it wasn't like, I think because I was prepared more mentally, I kind of knew more what to expect mm -hmm. from having Felix. So like I was more prepared mentally for it. So I didn't like my, I knew what was happening. With so you were more at, would you say you were more at peace? You had less fear mm -hmm. and anxiety and yeah. you just knew that your body proved to you it did it once and it would probably do it twice. Yeah.
That's great. Well, Sophia, look how calm you are. You're just looking and looking. Mm hmm. And what do you think about the birth? I think you were smart. You had it all planned out because the birthing tub got set up the day before. Mm -hmm. I actually took a picture of your mom pregnant probably 3 p.m. within 13 hours of your birth. We didn't know. And here you are. And oh. I made I made a bunch of freezer meals the day before. Oh, I'm freezer like, I meals! Need to make freezer meals, and like we got everything we cleaned ready the house. The day before. Yeah, I went grocery shopping, and then she was born. The car seat that you needed for her arrived in the mail just two or three days prior. Actually, yeah, I don't remember how long we had the car seat. Oh, just a before, few days. But, yeah. She's gonna yawn or sneeze. Mm -hmm. Ready? Wait for it. <laughs> nope, neither. All right. Any um uh, any other comments you want to make like? comparing the births or um anything stand out to you different about this birth i mean the biggest difference was it just happened a lot faster and it seemed like it started a lot more intense than okay. it did but i still my water didn't break until she was like it was so that was this most of it actually it was very similar it was just this time around she was born in the water mm -hmm. so that was the biggest difference and also it was a lot faster did you like the water? Would you like, like next time, would you like to, if you had more time, labor in the water? Yeah. Or maybe. I if I had, could spend more time. But you well, would do I a know. water birth again, right? I would do you it prefer again. the water mm -hmm. versus land? It was, yeah. It just, my body, for easier for me to get in a comfortable position. Cause oh, like, you were the weight, in the bathtub last I was in time. The tub, our regular bathtub, and my knees and Small. my feet. Like, I, I think that was distracting me because I was like, my feet kept falling asleep, my ankles. So there were no that. distractions in the in the birthing tub pool. It was pretty big, and it was big enough. The water just felt nice being in the water and being able to get in a comfortable position, and not like feeling all the weight of me like on my toes or my ankles or whatever. It was, <laughs> oh, bless you. And bless you. and was it a relief that Felix was sleeping in the other room? The mm -hmm. time to have a baby middle of the night or early morning yeah. is very nice. Yeah. You didn't have to scramble. In. And I showed up at 5.25 a.m., so I met her before mm -hmm. she was an hour old. <laughs> yep. Great. All right. Thank you, and enjoy your baby moon <laughs> with your almost seven-week-old baby. Yeah. Bye, Sophia. Bye. Good morning. Look at this smiling face. That's your little sister. Eh. He's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> eh. What? More water? Eh. Oh Here we go. Here we go. Your foot in your face. Well, hello, Colin, father of the baby number two, second unassisted birth. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a very interesting, uh, I would say, a much different uh, experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Partly because, obviously, the experience of the first one, um, but also it just kind of happened a little differently, too. Um, if you remember, from the first, uh, my wife woke up at about what four in the morning ish, roughly thereabouts. And Felix wasn't born until afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, we 
this. She woke up roughly around three. I woke up a little bit after her before she realized I was awake, kind of similar to last time. She was about to wake me up and I woke up on my own. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I kind of rolled over and I looked at her and she was facing the other direction and she was doing those, those breaths. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, well, here we go. Uh, so I guess it's gonna be between noon and one when this kid comes out, you know, expecting the same time frame. Um, so I was, wasn't really, I wasn't really um, thinking like I need to rush, like mm -hmm. I need to get things ready. Uh, I was like, okay, well, we got time to fill up the, the birthing pool. We did a birthing pool this time around. Um, you know, I was thinking, okay, Felix is asleep, we're going to have to figure out who's going to come get Felix for the daytime once he wakes up. Um, and of course I was much less anxious for this time around because this is my second rodeo, it's no big deal. I've been here, you know, it's, it's not super intensive on me, I just pay attention to her cues. Um, and uh, when the time comes, I catch. Okay. Very, very easy for uh, for a man to do, I think. Um, but then all of a sudden she started acting like this is this is coming faster. Like this is this is happening quick. And I was like, so what? Like what roughly equivalent time from last time? you feel like like, like eight, nine, just like ten. <laughs> like okay, so we're we're getting close. We're getting close. And this was, gosh, just after four in the morning. Up, you know, we were starting to get the, the, the tub filled for the, uh, the pool, the little mini blow up pool. Um, then she was leaning on the uh, medicine ball you see her next to me here. Um, mm -hmm. She was kind of doing some breaths and going through some of those contractions. And then it got to a point where she just said, like, we, like I have to get in now. Like, I don't know if I'm going to make it from getting up from this kneeling position to get into the pool before the baby comes. I'm like, it's not even five in the morning. Like this is, yeah. this is going very fast. Um, so literally, I helped her into the pool, and I was kind of holding her hand, you know, sitting with her, and she was facing towards the bed. And then she was like, "This is," like she went through maybe what two on the, on the third contraction while she was in the pool. Sophia was born. Wow! Wow! From start to end, like I, I did, ninety minutes. Kind of, quickly like run over to get behind her and catch her. and it was 441 so labor all told was less than two hours wow and let's Absolutely just take a look at baby number one felix hello felix hi okay he's doing well he's doing well <laughs> 17 months now yeah 18 going months on 18, 18 yeah months that's going to be here week. in a few days all right so you say your anxiety was less during this pregnancy and birth. And last time you had a little interference, shall I say, or opinions from family members or friends, which many of us do who have unassisted birth. Was it better this time around? It was definitely better this time around. I think the, the fact that we had gone through it already, obviously we know what we're doing. Um, I think that kind of that kind of helped put their nerves to ease a bit. And so they didn't really, like they knew what was gonna happen. They probably once or twice maybe said like, if you wanna have a midwife or a doula or you wanna go to a birthing center or something like that. And we're like, yeah, maybe, but probably not. Okay. Um, and so they, they didn't really bring it up as much. They were like, okay, well, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And you know, there's no real good point in arguing. So Great. they kind of kept their, their, their distance on that. Uh, they were supportive of everything. They just kind of were like, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so they didn't really have fear. They didn't, they didn't try and put any anxieties they might have. Uh, you know, and, and I can't blame them for having the anxieties because they've never, you know, they've never gone this way. Correct. They've never, you know, my parents, completely out of that, that window of time where they could do that again. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't they have no experience with that. Um, with with my brother and my sister in law and their kids, they uh, the first one was a C section and they've kind of they 
they've had to kind of go that route where, you know, for all their subsequent children have been C-sections. Mm -hmm. um, it's what the medical establishment will say, and that's what they believe. And everything has been fine for them so far. Mm -hmm. you know, God bless them. They're having their seventh year and the end of the year. Wonderful. Um, so how do you feel being... I don't know, a renegade or outside the norm. Do you feel pressured by that? Do you feel honored and proud of that? Or do you just feel it's part of life? It's the decision that you've come to make. Yeah, it's just the decision that come to make. It, it's what makes sense to me. And I mean, I could argue that to me, it's like the way it should be. Mm -hmm. um, I think from a logical perspective, if you look at it that way, it kind of is. You got to think, you know, humans have been giving birth for, However many, you know, depending, depending on your eschatological views of, of how, you know, time has worked, millions to thousands of years, mm -hmm. uh, there was no medical establishment giving us, telling us what we should or shouldn't do. Uh, the body would tell, you know, the, the woman's body would tell the woman what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. The man would respond to that okay. and, cr and create for her a safe environment in which that can happen as it should without interference. Obviously, we believe if something were to all of a sudden start going horribly wrong, you know, and she could tell, you know, because we've read up on the books of what, what can, what can go wrong, what we can handle and what we cannot handle mm -hmm. in terms of like, you know, in terms of ensuring that, uh, the baby and the mother survive, obviously. Um, so, you know, if something were like that were to arise, we would go to a hospital because that's what that's for. Mm -hmm. um, but being pregnant and giving birth are not serious medical conditions. It's not a serious medical procedure. It's not something where you have to have doctors involved. Mm -hmm. Just like with the conception of a child, it's the man and the woman. And that's all that needs to be involved when the child comes into the world out of the womb. Thank you. Can you tell me how profound it is as a man to participate in a an unassisted home birth or free birth, as we refer to it? Uh, it's it's like it's like nothing else. You know, you, it's it's like it feels like the the greatest accomplishment in your entire life, uh, even though you know you didn't really have. A whole lot to do you, you, you're kind of assuming the passive role uh, which is kind of opposite for a man usually the man is is active um, so having to having to, to go into that that opposite mindset where you are the the receiver um, you've given your gift to the to your woman to your wife and now you're receiving it back um, and just you know, as you get to that moment where you start seeing the head pop through and all of a sudden you're, you're catching your child and, you know, you're holding her or him um, and you're looking her in the eyes and you just realize, like, it, it, it's so much more tangible. Like, there's, you know, seeing the pregnancy test and you know you're pregnant, but then, like, you start feeling kicks and you know there's something in there. Mm -hmm. But then... You, you're holding this life in your hands. It's so profound. Um, it's life changing every time. You know, I've only had two. Yeah. Um, I would say it was no less like world rock than the set than the first time. It yeah. was just like, oh my goodness. Like we, we created a new life mm -hmm. and then handing Handing her over to Tina, and then going to get some towels so that you can dry her, to keep her warm, and then you know helping her to the bed afterwards. It's just like you know, it's one of those things where like you know you remember a day forever, you know, and it's like it makes you think that's a memory of something. Like, it overshadows everything. Yeah, and and when I hear your story. Felix, hi, is talking. Felix is talking. He wants, I know what he wants to do. He wants to look at one of his little programs. What I wanted to say is that you did not have interference or interruption in the process. 
I've experienced four hospital births and there was interference between the whole process of giving birth and the baby coming out and you holding the baby and making a discovery of this new human life that is your child. And that is what's fascinating, what I wish couples would really need to think about. There's many interruptions to your most profound, sacred, spiritual, holy moment of your baby being born and you're having other people intervene and interfere. Why? Either because you're afraid or because that's just the way the culture does it. So it, it, when I hear your story, you did, you bypassed all of that. And that is just very, that's very special. So uh, any words you'd like to give encouragement to men you did in your last video. Now the second time around, um, what would you like to, uh, anything more you can really encourage other men about this birth? process um, it's it's one of those things where you have to look deeply into yourself and realize that we're told a lot of things we're shown a lot of things over the course of your education just exposure to what the society says what the medical establishment will say um, a lot of that is fueled by fear and I really can't I guess I can't really blame the doctors and that, that's the end of things, the nurses, what they will say. Because that's what they see all, all day, you know. They're in a hospital where things are going wrong, and that's why people are there. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have a certain, a leaning, kind of a lens on everything they see. They're going to try and read problems into it. And so because, you know, the ones that are going to be involved with hospital deliveries, they're going to see more often than not the issues that will happen. And in some instances, they will read problems into things where there are not. Um, that's just a fault of the human mind where what you're exposed to the most is what you see. Um, so, so how can men overcome this so and make reflect, the decision? You have to reflect upon that and okay. understand that you have to, you kind of, you have to accept the fact that yes, they may be medical experts, but you can you can kind of be the foil to that and understand it from a different perspective and understand where there might be that overactivity of looking for a problem to solve where there isn't one. And then understand that in the doctor's case, when it comes to birth, they're looking for a problem where there is not one. And I would say it's incumbent upon any man to look at that as their responsibility to understand where there should and should not be an intervention, medically speaking. Um, the first principle of, of medicine is, you know, if there's nothing to fix, don't fix it, basically. Do no, if you are not taking, doing procedures that are unnecessary, you won't do unnecessary harm. Mm -hmm. And so in this instance, at birth, if everything has been going well during the pregnancy, Everything seems perfectly well. I would say you have to look at that and say, that's everything going the way it should. And uh, I understand if you're not comfortable, maybe if you want to do like a birthing center, kind of you know, dipping your toes like some of my friends have done. They're, they do birthing centers and it's, I would say pretty close to what we've, from what they've described, it's pretty close to what we've done. Where you basically just have the room. Mm -hmm. and you will page them if you have an issue. Um, but it doesn't even have to go, you don't even need that. If, if you know things are going well, and you know the signs of what could be going wrong, and you're not seeing any of those signs, let it be as it is. Because there's no place that your wife is going to be more comfortable than in her own home. There's no better place for a child to come into the world than possibly the same room in which they were created. And so you have no sorts of interruption uh, of preventing the mother from holding her child and just resting after the ordeal and having that bonding time. Like I know in some hospitals, you know, you actually have to pay 
you'll get like a fee, an extra fee for skin to skin contact immediately afterwards. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've seen. It's <laughs> not it's not a universal you know, a universal thing, but that's something that I've seen in some instances where like they literally have like on their hospital bill, you know, immediate skin to skin contact. You know, five thousand bucks, and that's like it gets billed to the insurance. They don't see it, but still, wow. like, that's insane. That's wow. something they'll try and profiteer on. Wow. They're pulling insurance money for that. Wow. Insane. All Something right. that shouldn't even happen. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for your comments and uh, uh, good luck in your new journey as a father of two. Mm -hmm. And as every day goes by, it's loving and learning and you're off to a good start. Thank you.